now we will see uh, we will understand the himalayan river system and also later this lecture we will also understand the peninsular river system and the origin of both these uh, river systems first we will see the himalayan river system and its origin later we will see some of the most important river systems that is uh, indus ganges and brahmaputra Good morning students welcome back to Plutus IS right today is our 38th day so yesterday we have started geography topic and we have seen the physical features of India physical features of India we have studied so today we will study about the rivers and their tributaries or also famously we call it as the drainage uh, drainage system of India right this is also very important topic from the point of view of examination right so before going into the rivers and their tributaries we will understand the concept of river basins and water sheds right river base uh, river basin it, it refers to the area that is uh, before basin before understanding the basin you should understand one more word that is catchment catchment area so catchment area is an area drained by a particular river single river so the region i mean the area look at say this is all the area that is drained by a single river a single particular river that is known as catchment area right so when it comes to uh, basin basin is the area that is drained by the river and its tributaries also so if we take the example of ganges so it has many other uh, rivers gagar is there ramganga is there so if you take the uh, right bank yamuna is there son river is there so the entire area that is drained by a particular river uh, including the tribut tribut tributaries of that river that is known as basin similarly there is the third concept that is called watershed right right so if we say there are two basins this is the basin of ganges similarly beside this we can say for example brahmaputra basin is there brahmaputra basin is there so <coughs> it is there in uh, it is brahmaputra i mean this region basically assam and uh, some part of the west bengal that region is uh drained by brahmaputra and uh, some of its tributaries so the water divide or the line that is dividing these particular two basins that is known as the water shed water shed so uh, try to remember these three concepts first one is catchment area second one is basin and the third one is uh we can say water shed so watershed is the uh, line that is dividing the two river basins that is known as watershed so watershed is important when we discuss about the conservation of water conservation of water or for that matter we are say water management also water management so many projects that are being taken up for conservation of water or restoring the or recharging the ground water or to we can say to develop an area to i mean ecologically and also improve the socio and especially the economic conditions of a particular area especially rural areas the present strategy followed by the government is the watershed approach water shed approach so uh, the projects that are being uh, held i mean conducted here they are taking watershed as uh, watershed as a unit for the projects various projects including the water conservation uh, project or for that matter ground water recharge project if we see on the broader scale to improve the uh, living conditions of the people the watershed is being taken as a unit so most of the programs the we can say uh water conservation programs 
in mj and raga pga they are also taking watershed as a unit and uh, they are focusing on developing that entire area so watershed is a very very important concept not only in geography but also when we discuss the uh, i mean environmental aspects as well as, as well as the poverty alleviation right so try to remember this and uh, use in the examination especially in the mains examination you have to quote it when you talk about the rural development aspects and also we can say the protection of environment or we can say conservation of ecology right <coughs> these are some definitions about uh, the catchment area the basin and the watershed right <coughs> so a river basin it refers to the area drained by a river and its tributaries while watershed is the boundary separating one drain drainage basin from the other <coughs> river basins cover larger areas compared to watersheds which are smaller in size so basically the basins that are drained by you can say small rivulets small rivulets and the rills we can say these areas also sometimes called as interchangingly as water sheds so basically the river basins are very very big we have seen ganges basin is there brahmaputra basin is there similarly when you come uh, down south we have godavari basin we have krishna basin we have kaveri basin etc right now we will understand the indian drainage system right so we can see many types of classifications i mean classification basically the river basins are classified uh, based on many themes one is based on size the other can be based on the flow of direction right flow of directions another basis can be the origin so the rivers or the basins can be classified on many basis so we will see some of the classifications based on different different themes right so it is if it is categorized based on the orientation of water discharged into the sea it can be divided into broadly two categories that is one is arabian sea drainage arabian sea drainage second one is bay of bengal drainage bay of bengal drainage right so uh, some of the rivers are flowing if you see the uh, map of india you will understand some of the rivers like indus and also in the peninsular area the narmada tapti so these rivers and also down south some of the rivers that are uh, in kerala like uh, bharat puja alap puja these rivers are flowing into the bay of bengal and one more river is there luni river in the rajasthan so all these rivers so one more river mahi is there so many rivers are there including indus they are flowing towards uh, arabian sea i mean they merge with the arabian sea <coughs> so apart from that many other rivers we can say majority of the rivers they are flowing eastwards uh, major, uh, most of the rivers from uh, we can say northern india if you see this is ganges and also brahmaputra river system brahmaputra and also if you take the peninsula mahanadi river is there godavari river krishna is there and the kaveri river river is there so most of these rivers they are flowing into bay of bengal system uh, sorry bay of bengal so these river system can be called as bay of bengal drainage system or river system so approximately 77 of the drainage area including rivers like uh, ganga brahmaputra mahanadi krishna etc they flow into bay of bengal whereas 23% of the rivers they flow into arabian sea so there is a water divide about the rivers so basically the water div uh, river, uh, divide will be like this some of the rivers will be flowing towards the arabian sea so some of the rivers uh, most important rivers are narmada tapti and uh, luni river is there mahi river is there so indus ri uh, river i have said so the water uh, divide water line divide is there which is divide uh, dividing the west flowing rivers from the east flowing rivers so here the division basically is aravalli hills 
in the north india including the delhi ridge delhi ridge when it comes to south india basically the division is water divide is western ghats western ghats so try to remember these aspects also try to remember these facts all right if you if you see this is the india map so water divide will be i mean generally will be like this so here narmada and tapti are flowing this is the western ghats these are the aravalli mountains and indus river is flowing like this so most of the rivers are flowing in this direction right so this is the one category that is based on the oceans into which they are flowing next category is we can classify the rivers based on the watershed size also so try to remember this classification uh, this classification also because apart from prelims there might be a question in the mains also uh, you may be asked in the mains about uh, divide the india's rivers uh, based on the size of the catchment area or you can use this question whenever there is a question on the rivers or the availability of water briefly you can give a background about the indian river system through this classification uh, division of we can say rivers in based on the size of the basin right if you see the classification of uh, i mean classification of basins based on the watershed size we can basically divide <coughs> we can divide into three categories the basins we can divide into three categories first is major river basins they are exceeding the basin size is 20000 square kilometers so more than 20000 square kilometers is, is the catchment area or the we can say basin also right so the major rivers are which, which are having more than 20000 square kilometer catchment area are ganges brahmaputra krishna tapi or tapti narmada etc so there are 14 rivers in india right that have major catchment areas so try to remember these numbers also you i mean they are useful for quoting the quoting in the examinations when you are writing a mains answer right next category is the medium category where the catchment area is between 2000 to 20000 square kilometers right so this uh, these uh, we can say river systems or basin systems are called as medium river systems uh, some of the examples are kalindi river periya river and the meghna rivers right so there are 44 rivers in india which have a medium medium range of catchment area so rest of the rivers small rivers are minor rivers or we call them as minor catchment areas so which have the uh, we can say a catchment area less than 2000 square kilometers so many rivers are there uh, thousands of uh, more than thousands of rivers are there which have minor catchment area in india right so this is one classification we can say this is the second classification based on the size of the classment uh, cla catchment area now another third classification is rivers can be divided based on north and south i mean rivers located in north india and rivers located in south india right so north india rivers originating from the himalayas basically and discharging into bay of bengal or arabian sea examples are ganges brahmaputra yamuna indus etc south indian rivers so rivers originating from western ghats mostly and they are flowing into bay of bengal examples include godavari krishna kaveri pennar etc so there are exceptions are there in these classifications because some of the rivers like narmada tapti etc <coughs> with others some uh, smaller rivers are there they discharge their waters into the arabian sea contrary to the general pattern of rivers in india so most of the rivers they are being discharged into the bay of bengal but contrary to that uh, some exceptions are there narmada tapti <coughs> some other rivers are there mahi luni etc so these rivers discharge into arabian sea including the indus river right right 
so these are the some of the basis on which rivers can be classified but the most accepted classification is based on the we can say origin of the rivers so uh, the most accepted classification is based on the origin of the rivers so mostly the himalayan rivers they have origin their origin is later to that of peninsular rivers peninsular rivers peninsular rivers have originated long time ago than that of the we can say himalayan rivers so this is the most accepted classification based on the origin and we can say time of origin so this is the classification we are following in this lecture and we are going to discuss the rivers based on this classification right so the basic on the basis of uh, on the basis of mode of origin nature and the characteristics the indian drainage system may also be classified into the himalayan drainage and the peninsular drainage so this is the most accepted classification and it is very comfortable for a discussion also so nature also when we see the himalayan rivers are uh, we can say perennial rivers whereas the uh, peninsular rivers are seasonal seasonal so there are lot of uh, differences in characteristics uh, i mean in the beginning of the river in the medium uh, i mean <coughs> Uh, when we see the course of the rivers also there are lot of differences in characteristics in the himalayan rivers and the peninsular rivers so this is the most accepted we can say classification of the rivers right now we will see uh, we will understand the himalayan river system and also later this lecture we will also understand the peninsular river system and the origin of both these uh, river systems first we will see the himalayan river system and its origin later we will see some of the most important river systems that is uh, indus ganges and brahmaputra next we will understand the origin of the peninsular river systems also and we will see some of the important rivers like mahanadi ganga uh, sorry godavari krishna etc right so the himalayan drainage system it comprises of rivers like ganges Inja, uh, indus and uh, brahmaputra these uh, rivers are primarily fed by both the snow melt and the precipitation rendering them as perennial rivers so basically the himalayan river systems are perennial perennial means there will be always water flowing so in all seasons water will be flowing in these rivers the reason behind in the we can say in the summer seasons water is fed by the snow melt so the we have understood uh, previously uh, in the last class that the himalayas have lot of glaciers so glaciers are basically the water collected by melting of snow so himalayas thousands of glaciers so basically these glaciers act as the sources for uh, himalayan rivers yeah rivers so we have understood this when we were discussing yesterday when we were discussing about the uh, physical features of india especially about the himalayan himalayas right so in summer the water is fed into these rivers through the melting of snow in winter i mean in the rainy seasons in the rainy and for that matter in winters also the water uh, these rivers are fed by the we can say the monsoons and also the western disturbances so basically through rainfall in uh, summers uh, sorry in uh, monsoon season in the rainy season and winter seasons these rivers are fed by the precipitation right so because of these reasons they are perennial water will be flowing uh, them continuously when we see the uh, peninsular rivers they are seasonal rivers i mean water will be available only uh, only majorly during the monsoon season in the rest of the season in winter season the water flow will be less and when it comes to summer season the rivers almost dry up and the water will not be available so this is one of the uh, major differences between the peninsular rivers and the himalayan rivers also right if we understand the geological evolution of the himalayan rivers so this system has evolved over a long geological history influenced by the uplift of the himalayas right 
సో ఇరోజినల్ యాక్టివిటీ డ్యూరింగ్ దిస్ అప్లిప్ట్ హ్యాస్ కావ్డ్ అవుట్ గెయింట్ ఆర్ జాయింట్ గార్జెస్ అండ్ వి షేప్డ్ వ్యాలీస్ అలాంగ్ ది రివర్ కోర్సెస్ రైట్ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ ది జియోలాజికల్ ఎవల్యూషన్ ఆఫ్ ది గ్యాంజస్ వి కెన్ సే రివర్ సిస్టమ్స్ సో క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ ఆఫ్ ది హిమాలయన్ రివర్స్ ఆర్ దే ఎగ్జిబిట్ వేరియస్ ఫీచర్స్ సచ్ యాజ్ ర్యాపిడ్స్ ప్లీజ్ ట్రై అండ్ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ వెకాబులరీ ఐ మీన్ వర్డ్స్ ఆర్ ఫీచర్స్ దే మైట్ బి ఆస్ ఇన్ ది ప్రిలిమ్స్ ఎగ్జామినేషన్ దే కెన్ బి గివెన్ ఆస్ ది వీ కెన్ సే అండర్ క్వశ్చన్ కన్సిడర్ ద ఫాలోయింగ్ దెట్ మైట్ బి ఎ క్వశ్చన్ లైక్ దిస్ అండ్ ఏ బి సిడిఈ ఆర్ వీ కెన్ సే వన్ టూ త్రీ ఫోర్ అండ్ ఆల్ దీస్ వర్డ్ వొకాబులరీ ఆర్ ఫీచర్స్ కెన్ బి గివెన్ అండ్ ది క్వశ్చన్ కెన్ బి లైక్ విచ్ ఆఫ్ ది అబో ఆర్ ది ఫీచర్స్ ఆఫ్ ది హిమాలయన్ రివర్స్ సో దేర్ మే బి ఎ క్వశ్చన్ లైక్ దిస్ సో ప్లీజ్ ట్రై టు రిమెంబర్ దిస్ వొకాబులరీ సో ది క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ ఆఫ్ హిమాలయన్ రివర్స్ ఆర్ ఐ మీన్ దే హ్యావ్ ఫీచర్స్ లైక్ ర్యాపిడ్స్ వాటర్ ఫాల్స్ అండ్ మియాండరింగ్ కోర్సెస్ సో వెన్ దే కమ్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ ది హిమాలయన్ రివర్స్ ఐ మీన్ హిమాలయన్ మౌంటైన్స్ ద రివర్స్ దే ఫాస్ట్ ఫ్లో ఇన్ ది వెన్ వెన్ దే ఆర్ ట్రావెలింగ్ ఇన్ ది మౌంటైన్స్ బికాస్ ది వీ కెన్ సే గ్రేడి గ్రేడియంట్ ఈస్ వెరీ హై వన్స్ దే ఎంటర్ ద ప్లేన్స్ ద గ్రేడియంట్ ఈస్ ఆల్మోస్ట్ జీరో ఐ మీన్ ద ప్లేన్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ ఫ్లాట్ సో బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ వన్స్ ద రివర్ రివర్స్ ఎంటర్ ది ప్లేన్స్ దే ఫా దే ఫామ్ మియాండర్స్ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ ది వీ కెన్ సే షేప్ ఆఫ్ ది మియాండర్ సో బికాస్ ది ప్లేన్స్ ఆర్ ఐ మీన్ ది ప్లేన్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ ఫ్లాట్ ద రివర్స్ టేక్ ఐ మీన్ ఫామ్ మియాండర్స్ లైక్ దిస్ రైట్ సో దిస్ దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఫ్యూచర్ ఆఫ్ మియాండరింగ్ రైట్ సో వెన్ దే ఫామ్ డి దే ఆల్సో ఫామ్ డిపోజిషనల్ ఫీచర్ డిపోజిషన్ ఈస్ సో దిస్ ఈస్ ద బిగినింగ్ ఫేస్ ఇయర్ బిగినింగ్ ఆఫ్ ద రివర్ ఇయర్ వీ విల్ సీ ది ఎరోజినల్ ఫేసెస్ ఎరోజియర్ ఎరోజియోనల్ ఫీచర్స్ సచాస్ rapids waterfalls <coughs> these are the erosional features so meandering say we can uh, see the meandering in the mid course of the river so in the last or, or later part of the river's course we will generally see the uh, depositional features so whatever the we can say sediments that are brought from the we can say beginning of the course they are deposed in the later part of the river's course or the end part of the river's course so that's why it is called as the depositional they are called as the depositional features so such as flood plains braided channels and the deltas as they enter the plains so these uh, depositional features are formed uh, when the river enters in the plains or we can say before merging into the sea right <coughs> these are the some of the features and the characteristics of the himalayan river system right now we will understand the evolution of the uh, himalayan drainage system right uh, first is shivalik or indo brahma river was there so de- uh, during the mesocene period around 2 5 to 24 million years ago a mighty re- uh, river named shivalik or indo uh, indo brahma river flowed uh, longitudinally across himalayas so at the place where now the himalaya stand there was a river indo brahma river or shivalik river was uh, flowing in this direction east to we can say west direction right so if this is india so a river was flowing in this direction before the himalayas existed right that is that river is known as indo brahma river or shivalik river so it extended from assam to punjab and eventually discharged into the gulf of sindh near lower punjab so here it was discharging into arabian sea uh, in the lower punjab area so the continuity of uh, shivalik and its deposits of sands silt clay etc and uh, they support this theory so now if we understand the we can say geology or the i mean sediments there so all these uh, all these we can say these things are available so through this evidence we can confirm the existence of this indo brahma river once upon a time before the himalayas have been formed right right so after emergence of himalayas it has formed into the 
three drainage systems we will understand how that happened now right over time the indo brahma river it was dismembered into three main uh, drainage systems the indus and its five tributaries in the western part so here indus system has emerged the ganges and its himalayan tributaries in the central part and uh, thirdly the brahmaputra and its tributaries in the eastern part or the assam part right so this uh, dismemberment is likely caused by the pleistocene uh, pleistocene upheaval of the western himalayas including the uplift of the putwar plateau that is delhi ridge so once the himalayas especially the western himalayas emerged due to also the movement of the indian plate and its a submer sub <coughs> subduction under the eurasian plate eurasian plate is there you also know so when you uh, study the tectonic plates theory you will better understand this concept so indian plate is still moving and it is being subducted under the uh, subducted under the eurasian plate so because of this reason the himalayan himalayan fold mountains have emerged so the especially when the western himalayas have upheld <coughs> uplifted so this particular river system shivalik river, uh, river system this has been divided into three segments what is indus river system second one is in i mean ganges river system and the third one is the brahmaputra river system right also because of the we can say the delhi ridge and the aravalli hills they are acting as a water divide between the we can say ganges river system and the indus river system right right next effect of the mid pleistocene period so during the mid pleistocene period the down uh, down thrusting of the malda gap area between the rajmal rajmahal hills and the meghalaya plateau redirected the ganga and the brahmaputra systems towards the bay of bengal so basically these rivers were flowing the ganges and brahmaputra were also flowing towards the westwards so when this area central area they uh, that is emerge so these rivers have changed their directions and they have started flowing towards the bay of bengal right so this geological event altered the flow patterns of these rivers leading them towards the eastern coast rather than the western part of the indian subcontinent so this is how the three major river systems uh, in the himalayan river system they have emerged right so these are the major rivers this is the indus river system and we can say its tributaries also jhelum chena ravi uh, bias and the satluj right so if you see the ganga river system <coughs> right so this is the ganga river system ganges yamuna yamuna is the major tributary apart from that Ga uh, gandak river is there kosi river is there chambal is there so luni river basically flows this, uh, this in this direction not it uh, do not flow into the ganges it will flow towards the arabian sea right saraswati river is there now it is not existent once upon a time i mean the experts are saying that saraswati was existent at one time right so similarly some other rivers are also there here son river is there <coughs> ken river is also there betwa river is also there so they also part and parcel of the we can say ganga river system and the brahmaputra river it flows from here in tibet it is known as yarlang sangpo and uh, once it enters uh, the assam plains it is known as brahmaputra river many tributaries are also there uh, for the brahmaputra river system right right so this is the Inda, indus river system right so you can understand this is the uh, indus river system so major there are five major tributaries are there the, those are jhelum chena ravi satluj satluj and bias so these are the five major rivers apart from that many other rivers are there many other tributaries are there that are joining satluj sorry indus river right so some of the rivers are uh, we will understand in the next slide so some of the small rivers or tributaries of the indus river system are shok river gilgit river jaskar river hunza nubra shigar that sing and the dras these are many small rivers so that are those are the tributaries of the indus river system 
try to remember these names also so there may be a question previously on the model i have discussed so the list of the rivers can be given and a question may be asked like this so these rivers are the tributaries of which river so a question may be asked like this so try to remember the names also right if you understand some uh, some more information about the indus river system right the indus river is uh, is one of the largest basins in the world it is originating from a glacier near bokarchu in the tibetan region right so the river traverses through various regions including ladakh baltistan and enters pakistan near chilas in the uh, dardistan region right so it uh, discharges into the arabian sea uh, to the east of karachi to be specific flowing through india only in jammu and kashmir right so try to remember this information right right so these are the some of the uh, small uh, tributaries uh, of indus right so five major uh, tributaries i have told uh, about the indus uh, river system indus river so first one is jhelum river so it is origin originates from a spring at varyang in the valley of kashmir it flows through srinagar and the ular lake before entering pakistan through a deep narrow gorge it joins the china river uh, near jhang in pakistan so if we see about the china river it is formed by confluence of chendra and bhaga rivers near tandi himachal pradesh so because of this reason it is also known as chandra bhaga river it flows uh, for 1180 kilometers before entering pakistan and joining the inda uh, and joining the next one is uh, the ravi river so it rises west of the rohtang pass in the kullu hills of himachal pradesh it flows through the chamba valley before entering pakistan and joining the chena river uh, near sarai sarai sindhu right next river is bias river it originates from the bias kund near rohtang pass it flows through the kullu valley and forms gorges in the dauladhar range so it meets the satluj river near harike in the punjab plains right last one is the satluj river it originates in the rakasal near mansarovar in tibet uh, known as the lanchen kambab so it flows parallel to the indus for about 400 kilometers before entering into india it to process, uh, passes through shipkila uh, so it is a one of the important passes between india and tibet right so on the himalayan ranges and enters into punjab plains important for feeding the canal system of the bakra nangal project so this satluj river is important for the bakra nangal project right next one is the uh, ganges river system right so it is originating from the gangotri glacier in uttarakhand it is the most significant when it comes to uh, india both geographically and also hydrologically and also we can say culturally also culturally also the river has very important significance right so it forms a vast river basin covering approximately 8.6 lakh square kilometers Uh, uh i mean shared by the states like uttarakhand uttar pradesh bihar west bengal etc right so it comprises of numerous tributaries uh, originating from himalayas and also from the peninsula contributing significantly to its flow or and hydrology so you can in the image you can see the tributaries of uh, ganges river right so yamuna river is there ram ganga is there gomti river is there gandak river is there ghagra is there kosi river is there mahananda river is there so when it enters west bengal it is called as uh, padma river so in the west bengal it divides <coughs> it uh, it is distributed into distributed into two major channels that is uh, hugli river hugli and padma rivers so damodar is also one of the tributaries of hugli so the peninsula rivers the rivers which are flowing from the peninsula and but they are merging with the ganges river are son river ker river is there betwa river is there so try to remember these two rivers ken and betwa so ken and betwa link project is there 
i mean efforts are being made to in- interlink these two projects so try to know about that uh, river linking pro- uh, project also uh, i mean it is in the it was in the news uh, some 4 5 years back especially this uh, ken betwa issue because there was active initiatives we can say to link these uh, two rivers interlinking of two rivers so that the bundelkhand region which is an arid region which is devoid of water so efforts are ma- being made to link these two rivers so that water or uh, irrigation facilities can be provided to this region bundelkhand region which is i mean very backward area hydrologically uh, i mean deprived area so if irrigation will be provided to this area we can see some sort of development here right another rivers are sindh river is there so chambal river is also one of the important rivers chambal has many we can say uh, tributaries banas river is there uh, parbati river is there kali sindh rivers are there so these are the some of the important tributaries of ganges river so when a particular river is divided into we can say two sub rivers it is known they are known as the distributaries right so once it uh, the ganga ganges river enter in, enters into west bengal it is distributed into hugli river and padma river right so this is uh, some information about the tributaries of the ganges river please go through them and try to find out the important aspects about all these uh, tributaries of the ganges river so left bank so try to remember whether they are entering from the left left bank and uh, right bank so that i mean previously there were questions about the banks i mean from which side these rivers are entering into the main rivers so the right bank tributaries are yamuna son chambal right so damodar is uh, damodar is also a right bank tributary it is basically damodar is the entering in the hugli hugli river a distributary of the ganges river right next is the uh, third important uh, river system brahmaputra river system so it is the one of the largest rivers globally however it has uh, some i mean limited we can say catchment area limited flow in the india india or indian subcontinent so majority of its catchment area is in uh, tibet i mean china or especially in tibet right in uh, tibet it is uh, known as yarlang songpo right so it is originate from this particular uh, glacier of the kailas range near manas sarovar lake so it is uh, initially known as songpo yarlang songpo in uh, tibet uh, travels eastward for about 1200 kilometers before emerging as siang or dihang river in india so it is known as siang or dihang in arunachal pradesh arunachal pradesh so first in india it enters arunachal pradesh later it will enter into the assam plains or we call so call them as the brahmaputra plains so upon entering in india it flows southwards and receives major left bank tributaries such as dibang or sikang and lohit uh, then it becomes brahmaputra so after these tribut- uh, tributaries merge with brahmaputra i mean the siang river or uh, dihang river it is called as brahmaputra river right so these are the left bank tributaries uh, i mean if you see the left bank and the right bank tributaries left bank tributaries are buri dihing and uh, dhansiri so these are the uh, two major left bank tributaries of the uh, brahmaputra river the right bank uh, tributaries are suvansiri kaming and uh, manas and uh, sankosh rivers these are the right bank tributaries right in assam valley it flows to around 750 kilometers right so flow into bangladesh enter after entering bangladesh near dubri uh the brahmaputra continues its journey towards southward in bangladesh it is joined by tista river on the right bank so try to remember the tista river is also it is an important bilateral issue between uh, india and bangladesh so the tista is the uh, we can say tributary of the brahmaputra river right so after once it is enter after it enters bangladesh and joined by tista the river is known as jamuna river 
right so it eventually it uh, merges with the river padna which is the distributary of the ganges river forming the meghna river which is ultimately empties into bay of bengal right right so if we see the characteristics and the challenges of brahmaputra river as you all know it is infamous for floods it causes lot of floods in the we can say assam plains assam plains and also in the bangladesh right also known for channel shifting and bank erosion so because of all these reasons the people who live in these valleys i mean the way we can say the plains of the brahmaputra river they face every year they face flooding they face channel shifting and bank erosion right so these phenomena are exacerbated by the large tributaries and a heavy rainfall in the catchment area leading to significant uh, sedimentation right these are the some of the important aspects about the brahmaputra river system you also remember about the majuli is majuli island it is located in uh, assam so basically majuli island is the largest riverine island largest riverine island in the world so this majuli island is also subjected to floods every year so people living who are living there they they face lot of problems however the sedimentation or the floods they also have some ecological significance ecological significance so we will understand when we study about the environment part we will understand about the flooding of the uh, i mean the impact of flooding on the uh, when we consider when we see it as an ecological ecological aspect right these are the some of the aspects about the brahmaputra river all right right now we will understand about the peninsular river system we have understood the himalayan river system now we will understand the peninsular river system right so if we see the age wise the uh, peninsular river systems are older than the himalayan river systems right so they are characterized by broad course i mean the course is very broad and uh, <coughs> largely graded shallow valleys and uh, mature rivers so these are completely opposite to the himalayan river system so the we we see the course of the himalayan rivers in the beginning so course is very narrow and the rivers flow very rapidly when the course is in the himalayas they flow very rapidly and they are himalayan rivers are very young rivers so the peninsular rivers are quite opposite to that one so they uh, they are characterized by broad course graded i mean their course is graded degraded and uh, <coughs> uh they are mature rivers however whereas the himalayan rivers are young rivers right so they exhibit some of the other features of the peninsular rivers are they have fixed fixed courses whereas when we see the himalayan rivers they keep changing they keep changing their course all right so here we will not see any meanders in the peninsular rivers whereas in himalayan rivers we see the meandering features once they enter the plains so we do not see meanders in the peninsular river systems and they are non perennial uh, i mean they are non perennial means they are seasonal in nature seasonal in nature whereas the himalayan rivers are uh, perennial rivers they always have water flowing whereas we will see only during the monsoon uh, season and some part of the uh, winter season we will have water flow in the uh, peninsular river systems so try to remember these differences also there may be a question on the differences of the river systems of himalayas and peninsular river systems all right if you understand the water divide and the direction of flow so western ghats act as the water divide between major peninsular rivers we have understood it when it comes to himalayan system it is the aravalli mountains and the delhi ridge when it comes to the peninsular rivers the western ghats act as the water divide between the major peninsular rivers right so rivers discharge major rivers most of the rivers discharge their water into bay of bengal whereas some rivers like bharata puja etc narmada and tapi they discharge into arabian sea 
so most of the rivers flow from the west to east direction except narmada and tapi rivers right major rivers if we see the uh, ganga rivers is some of the rivers that are part of the peninsular river systems however they merge with the river ganga we have seen that so the rivers are chambal river sindh river betwa river kain river and son river so they originate they have the origin in peninsular plateau but they are part and parcel of the ganga river system other major river systems are mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri and the penar so etc some other major rivers are there so if we see some of the exceptional cases in the peninsular river system the narmada and the tapi or tapti rivers they flow through the rift valleys unlike the typical peninsular rivers so these two rivers flow through the rift valleys right so these exceptions have distinctive characteristics compared to other peninsular rivers so yesterday when we were studying the peninsular plateau we have understood in the we can say indian uh, when we were studying about the physical features so basically the we have seen the vindhyan ranges and the satpura ranges and the michael ranges were also there so basically these rivers narmada and the tapti rivers flow uh, through the rift valleys that are created by these mountain systems uh, vindhyan systems Sat- uh, vindhya satpura ranges so try to remember these facts right so if you understand the evolution of the uh, river system in peninsula or peninsular river system right <coughs> so during the early tertiary period the western flank flank uh, flank of the peninsula experienced subsidence leading to its submergence below the sea right so this event distributed the symmetrical plan of uh, river on either side of the original water shed after that upheaval of the himalayas so the upheaval of the himalayas uh, himalayas resulted in the northern flank of the peninsular block being subjected to subsi- uh, subsistence and a consequent trough faulting so rivers like narmada and tapti flow uh, in this trough trough falls and fill the original cracks with detritus materials so as a result these rivers lack typical alluvial and the deltaic deposits so this is the some information about the origin of the narmada and tapti right next tilting of the peninsular block so the peninsular block underwent a slight tilting from northwest to southwest direction so this tilting oriented the entire drainage system towards bay of bengal during the same period so this is the origination of the peninsular drainage system so this is the we can say some of the rivers i mean most of the rivers i have depicted that are part and parcel of the peninsular river system right so mahanadi is there uh, godavari river is there narmada and tapti uh, this is the krishna river system penar river is there kaveri river is there so these are the major we can say peninsular river systems right some of the information i mean uh, information have provided about the major peninsular river system mahanadi river so it is originated originates in uh, sihawa in raipur district of chatis chatisgarh courses it runs through odisha and uh, discharges into bay of bengal right so length is 851 km catchment uh, area is around 1 lakh square kilometers Di- drainage basin distribution so 53% of its drainage is in madhya pradesh and chatisgarh 47% is in odisha so some of its courses navigable especially the lower the lower part of the course is navigable right so next is godavari river so it is also known as the dakshin ganga because of the large catchment area large catchment area it is known as the dakshin ganga or we can say it is the largest river in uh, we can say largest river in peninsular river system so because of this reason it is known as the dakshin ganga it originates in nasik district of maharashtra discharges into bay of bengal catchment area sorry length is uh, 1465 kilometers catchment area is approximately 3 lakh square kilometers 
Uh, if we see the, we can say distribution of the basin, 49% in Maharashtra, 20% in Madhya Pradesh and Chhattisgarh, rest of in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Right. Tributaries, uh, major tributaries of it are Penganga, Indravati, Pranhita, Manjira. So try to remember the tributaries of the rivers because previously there have been many questions about the rivers and their tributaries. I mean, the specific uh, questions were about the left bank tributaries and the right bank tributaries also. Right. So here, yeah, here I try to provide the image which has the which is also which has also the information about the tributaries. <coughs> so some of the rivers tributaries of Godari River are Shabari, Indravati, Venganga. Uh, Penganga is there, Varda is there, Purna River is there. <coughs> so, origin, if we see, they are originating in the Triambak Hills of the Western Ghats, Nasik district. Right. Uh, some, some other tributaries are Pravara, Manjira. So, these are the tributaries of the <coughs> Godavari River. So, features, if we see, it is subjected to heavy floods in the lower reaches. Uh, some of its parts are navigable in delta A stretch. Next is Krishna River. So it is originate, it is also originating in Sahyadri or Western Ghats near Mahabaleshwar. Right. Course, it is east flowing. Tributaries include uh, tributaries are there in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. So length is approximately 1400 kilometers. Catchment area 20% uh, 27% is there in Maharashtra. 44% is there in Karnataka, uh, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, 29% is there. Major tributaries are Koyana, Tungubhadra, Bhima. So here in the image, you can see the major tributaries of the Krishna River. Uh, Munneru, Musi and uh, Halia. Dindi River is there. Bhima River is there. So these are the, we can say, left bank tributaries. And the right bank tributaries are Tungabhadra, the Tungabhadra river itself, it itself is forming with the confluence of two rivers. Those are Tunga and Badra. Next is Malaprabha river is there, Ghataprabha is there, uh, Panchaganga is there, Koyana rivers are there. So these are the, these rivers are the right bank tributaries of the uh, Krishna river. Next is another important river, Kaveri river. So it is subjected to a lot of controversies also. There is a tussle going on between the especially between Karnataka and uh, Tamil Nadu about the Kaveri River. So it is in the news. Try to remember uh, aspects about the Kaveri River also. So it is originating in the Brahmagiri Hills of Kodagu district of Karnataka. Length is 800 kilometers. Uh, catchment area is 81,000 square uh, kilometers. If we understand the catchment area, Kerala 3%, Karnataka 41%. Uh, Tamil Nadu approximately 56%. Right. So tributaries, uh, Kabini, Bhavani, Amravati. Characteristics, it flows through the uh, throughout the year with less fluctuation due to rainfall distribution. So this Kaveri River, it is uh, during the, we can say, summer monsoon season. Uh, summer monsoon season, it is fed by the southwest monsoon. So however, uh, you all know, the Tamil Nadu is also experienced uh, experiences the northeast monsoon also, right? So uh, during that period, winter monsoon period, the Kaveri River is fed by the winter monsoon. So because of this reason, the water is almost available uh, throughout the year, right? So if we see the, we can say the uh, reservoirs, major reservoirs. So Krishna Raj Sagar is there. Uh, Kabini River, one of its major tributaries. <coughs> right. So, some other project is there. Another project is there near E Road. Mittu Rear Reservoir is also located on the, uh, we can say, th I mean, the, the Kaveri River. Tanjavur at uh, Tanjavur also, another reservoir, reservoir is uh, located. So, when it before entering the sea, it has many distributor distributaries. It has divided into many channels. Right. Next is the Narmada River. So it is originated in the western flank, western flank of the Amarkantak Plateau. So course, if you understand, it forms a pic picturesque gorge near Jabalpur. It meets the Arabian Sea uh, south of the 
ಬರೂಜ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಸೊ ಟು ದ ಸೌತ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬರೂಜ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅರೇಬಿಯಾ ಸಿ ಲೆಂತ್ ಈಸ್ ಒನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಈಸ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ನೈಂಟಿ ಒನ್ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ನೋಟಬಲ್ ಫೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸರ್ದಾರ್ ಸರೋವರ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ನೋ ಸರ್ದಾರ್ ಸರ್ ಸರ್ದಾರ್ ಸರೋವರ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ವೆರಿ ಫೇಮಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ರೆಸ್ಟೀಜಿಯಸ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಂಟ್ರವರ್ಸೀಸ್ ಆರ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ನೋ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದೇಮ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿ ಸರ್ದಾರ್ ಸರೋವರ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿ ರಿವರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ನರ್ಮದಾ ರಿವರ್ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ತಪ್ತಿ ರಿವರ್ ತಾಪಿ ರಿವರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ಜಿನೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಮುಲ್ತಾಯ್ ಇನ್ ಬೇತುಲ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮಧ್ಯಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಫ್ಲೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಡ್ರೀನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅರೇಬಿಯನ್ ಸಿ ಕೋರ್ಸಿಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಈಸ್ ಅಪ್ರಾಕ್ಸಿಮೇಟ್ಲಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಸಿ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಕ್ಯಾಚ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಮಧ್ಯಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಗುಜರಾತ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದಿ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ವಿ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ತಪ್ತಿ ರಿವರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಸಮ್ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಲೋನಿ ರಿವರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಲಾರ್ಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ರಿವರ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಇನ್ ರಾಜಸ್ಥಾನ್ ಇಟ್ ಆರ್ಜಿನೇಟ್ಸ್ ನಿಯರ್ ಪುಷ್ಕರ್ ಬ್ರಾಂಚಸ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಸಬರ್ಮತಿ ರಿವರ್ಸ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ಸೊ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸಿ ದಿ ಲೋನಿ ರಿವರ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಅರೇಬಿಯನ್ ಸಿ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ನಾಟ್ ಮೆರ್ಜ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿ ಅರೇಬಿಯನ್ ಸಿ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಎಂಟರಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಮೀನ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಮೀಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸಿ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವಿ ಕೆನ್ ಸೇ ಡ್ರೈಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ವೆನ್ ಒನ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ಮಾರ್ಷಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಚ್ ಮಾರ್ಚಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ರಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಚ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ರಿವರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡ್ರೈಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಸೊ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ರೀಸನ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಎಫಿ ಮೆರಲ್ ರಿವರ್ ರೈಟ್ ಎಫಿ ಮೆರಲ್ ರಿವರ್ ಈಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಎಂ ಟಿ ಇನ್ ಟು ಎ ಸಿ ರೈಟ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ಲೋಸ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಸೌತ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಜಾಯಿನ್ ದಿ ರಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಚ್ ಸೊ ವರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಂಟರ್ಸ್ ದಿ ರಾನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಚ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಡ್ರೈಡ್ ಅಪ್ ರೈಟ್ right these are the some of the important rivers up uh, of uh, peninsular river system right so i try to cover most of the rivers you also from your side try to know more about some more rivers right now we will see some questions that are asked previously from this topic first question is asked in 2023 the question is consider the following statements the statements are jhelum river passes through ular lake yes we have seen this Jhelum River passes through Jammu and Kashmir and especially through the Ular Lake. Krishna River directly feeds into Kolleru Lake. So this is incorrect statement. Uh, Kolleru Lake is a freshwater lake but located in a distance from the we can say Krishna River. So it directly enters into the <coughs> uh, we can say Bay of Bengal. So this statement is incorrect. Next is meandering of the Gandak River formed kanwar lake so this is also uh, incorrect statement so uh, gandak directly i mean enters into the uh, gang i mean ganges river it is one of the important tributaries of the ganges so just before entering the plains only it merges with the ganges system so we do not see any meandering of the gandak river so statement how many question is how many of the statements given are above correct so only first statement is correct so the correct option is option next question it is asked in 2022 the question is gandikota canyon canyon of the south india was created by which of the following rivers right so gandikota uh, canyon so it is a very i mean picturesque and uh, beautiful canyon you can see if you visit south india especially andhra pradesh so it is located in the rayalseema region of andhra pradesh very beautiful canyon so it is formed by penna river penna river it in andhra pradesh it is called as penna river it is also known as the penna river so this penna river cre
so the we have understood this sutlej river it directly if this is the indus river the sutlej river directly joins the indus river so bias river generally it uh, this is bias so it is sutlej so sutlej river directly joins the indus river all the other we can say other uh, rivers see the jhelum chenab chenab ravi so all these rivers join the other rivers before merging with the uh, we can say the indus system only sutlej it will directly enter the uh, we can say merges with the indus river system so question is bit uh, confusing but uh, the exact meaning of uh, the question is this so all the rivers given here all the other three rivers they are joining some other river river before joining the indus river only one river it is directly joining the indus river so that river is sutlej so try to uh, you try to be thorough with these uh, specific characteristics like this at the previous uh, about the gandikota canyon also so you try to remember these type of specific characteristics of the rivers also because questions are being asked from this area also also one important thing you be uh, you have to be thorough about the reservoirs and the projects associated with the particular rivers also so previ previously rivers so previously questions were asked from this area also because of the paucity of time i am uh, i am unable to cover those aspects so try to uh, collect and read some information about the rivers and uh, major projects river i mean hydroelectric projects or we can say dams uh, associated with specific rivers right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the class mm, uh, see you next time until then have a good day right.